Hello everybody and welcome to a Jump Through to Heroes news video. We talked about this event already when we got the initial little bits of information but now we have the full release, all the information that you need to know. We also know what the units do, I'm going to go into a batch review, I'm going to maybe upload that tomorrow. Um, some good units here, some very good units here. Uh, so lots to talk about there but first of all we're going to talk about the event information, what happened on the stream and some very interesting information uh, that we have uh, <laughs> we have managed to be given, I suppose. It, it's a strange thing. We didn't expect this information, so it's very nice. Um, starting off with the main event. The Feast of 1000 Thanksgiving Festival. <laughs> big, big event to celebrate 1000 days and 10 million downloads. Now... I mentioned before the 1,000 days, we were approaching 1,000 days, we are finally going to be reaching that on the 21st. However, the the 1 million downloads is a bit of a weird thing because we have skipped 9 million. So we, we don't know what's happening with 9 million, I guess it's just dead. I, I don't know what to say, I mean there was a long period of time where we could have had a 9 million downloads event and it didn't come. So I don't really know what the reason for that is, but we have hit 10 million. Got a big event to celebrate it. And, I mean, you can see some of the characters there. It's pretty nice. Another nice thing is that this is a two-part event. Uh, this second part is much smaller. And it is going to run from the 1st until the 8th of January. I wouldn't expect there to be a lot in there. But I have, I have a feeling there's going to be... I mean, we know for a fact there's going to be a couple of new events. Uh, uh, we don't know what they are exactly. But with that will come some characters, and I have some theories about that that we'll talk to when we get a bit further down the post. So the login bonus gives us 500 rubies and 10 choice ticket fragments. Very nice. Um, these choice ticket fragments have an updated pool, you can see here. You've got to collect 100 to do one summon on this. You can choose any one of these characters. There's some really nice characters in here. It's basically all of the... I think it's all of the characters from prior to the anniversary last year so some cool stuff in there we got some naruto characters kateko hitman reborn a couple of characters from the 476 festival from the yu hakusho feature hoshin engi feature this of the north star some really nice picks here there's a few i've been waiting to get for a while i actually don't know which one i'm gonna pick um because i'm still missing quite a few of these but don't you don't have to deliberate it too much because all of these characters will be added to the standard gacha pool either at the end of January, start of February, around that time. So they will be available there and then they will be available from the choice ticket, the standard choice ticket, sometime middle of next year. So we're approaching the point where all these characters are going to be much more readily available. And when they get added to the standard ticket pool, they will also get added to the standard gacha pool. So every time you do a multi on basically any banner, you will have a chance to get these characters and all the other 2020 characters. So very nice. Now 194 fragments total being distributed here. You only need 100 to do the summon. The other 94 you will be using in a special store that will be available. Uh, you can trade those tickets in. I've, I've written it down here. You can trade those tickets in for other rewards. Some of the I haven't done the exact uh, numbers yet. Some of them you may have to spend on limited choice ticket fragments. In fact, I believe you do have to spend some on that. Uh, but if you want to know what the situation is with the limited choice ticket fragments, there are special missions for those, which we're gonna we're gonna scroll down and talk about those in just a sec. All those missions are going to be in the Discord as soon as I finish translating them, and all the character skills are already in the Discord. So. If you guys want to get the information, links in the description, to the Discord, to the website, and as always, to our Twitter. So hopefully you guys check those out. That's where you're going to be getting all your info. The 1000 day celebration hasn't actually given us much info. We know what's going on with this whole massive event. But the 1000 days event, they haven't specifically said too much. But essentially what it looks like is, you will collect this item here, which is called, you can see it up here. Pochibukuro, and these will be able to be traded in at the store for rewards. Now, the banner for this ticket, as far as I can tell, is not in the files yet. And I think this banner goes live in week two of the event because it's the New Year banner. 
I don't know exactly what to expect for part two of this event, but these tickets, typically speaking, do have limiteds on them. It's a small chance to get one, but you will have a chance to get some five stars and some other goodies and potentially some limiteds. So, this could be quite nice, depends how many rubies there are, depends how many choice ticket fragments are, but this is going to be another way for them to give us some more goodies. We're going to have more information on that event a little bit later. We have the free multi summons. These free multi summons, I'm a little bit disappointed it doesn't have an updated pool. But, you know, you can't have everything. <laughs> you can't have everything. Uh, so, this has the 2018 2019 pool, and you'll get a free multi summon every day at reset. So, make sure to do your free multi summon. And uh, maybe you get lucky. You never know. Maybe you'll get lucky. So, these are the limited choice ticket fragments I mentioned before. And you'll have a selection of characters to choose from, you can see down here. It's a bit strange because it has every limited gacha character that was released between the start of the game and Golden Week. Which is when Gear 4 Luffy Snake Man was released. What's weird about that is Golden Week is after the first anniversary. Because the anniversary is in March, Golden Week was in April. But, Martian Vegeta came out in, like, January, and he wasn't in there. So, I have absolutely no idea why he hasn't been included, but everybody else has. And if you're wondering what the best pick out of these is, for me, it's this guy right here. This guy is a beast. He is the only unit here that specifically counters a, a uh, Genkai battle. And... He's just very nice. He's just a, he's just a very nice unit still to this day. Uh, if you want some to avoid, Yoka Kurama for me would be one to avoid. Bound Man is like the first limited. He's not very good. He'd be one to avoid. Um, Naruto is not a bad one to go for. The the OT Naruto, not too bad. Echizen recently got a buff. He's actually a lot better than he used to be. Killer was still a pretty good pick. Uh, as much as I make fun of all might he's he's not unusable he he has some uses especially he's got a weakening support that's pretty good and like, there, there's some good units in here um but if you don't have any of these my personal opinion is you should either go for sagittarius sayer or choose the character you like the most obviously if you choose the character you like the most you might end up with a stinker but at least be going for a character you want or be going for a good character don't just pick one because it's like oh i don't have enough limiteds of this color or whatever because like i think say is the only one that's even close to really being meta here <laughs> say is the only one that's really getting consistent use anymore so just go for the one you want or go for sale that's that's my opinion uh the selection gacha so this one's important you need to do this prior to uh the 21st i haven't got long and this event, if I... Is this going to open up properly? Hold on this. Guess we'll find out. But this event will take you to the, the 1,000 downloads website or whatever it's called. 100... 10 million? 10 million downloads. Uh, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but I'm just going to scroll down this. Because all you need to see is... Which section is it? It's... Wait, what? Where'd it go? <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, it's down here. It's down here. Okay. So there's a selection of limiteds here. And what you're going to have to do is click on one. Sasuke, for example. And it's opened up another window that you can't see right now, prompting me to tweet out, which you, you should do. But I don't think you have to do. But what you're seeing right now is what you need to worry about. This screen here means that you have entitled yourself to one of these tickets. Now, what this ticket is is a selection ticket. What's the difference between a selection ticket and a choice ticket? Um, you would think not a lot, but actually quite a lot. <laughs> so when you click this button, you have to do this on the device you are playing Jump Booty on. I mean, maybe you don't have to, but it's much easier if you do it on the device you're playing Jump Booty on, because it'll take you to a screen that allows you to launch the game. Once you do that, get into the game, it will tell you you have been given one of these tickets, it will be in your inbox. Now, this ticket is going to be available from February. You'll have the ticket in-game 
but you won't be able to use it until February. And it will contain an assortment of the characters that are most voted for from Twitter. I assume it, it's a multi-ticket, so I assume it's going to include other, like, five-star characters or whatever. I don't know what the details are there. They haven't been super explicit about that. But, basically, the vote is for limited characters of any of the four types all the way up until the... Ah, uh, where does it end? It doesn't have Kimetsune Yaiba 2 on it, does it? So, the event before Kimetsune Yaiba 2, which was the the one that added Rayleigh and uh, Kurapika. I think that's the last event that's on there. And what you have to do, essentially, is when you vote and you tweet, they're going to count those tweets, and whoever has the most votes, they, you know, some of those characters are going to be featured on that ticket. And the ones that have less votes aren't. And... Potentially, this could influence other things. Potentially, this could influence, like, which series get more events and which characters get multiple versions in the future. So, please, just make your vote. Whichever character you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to know what I went for, I chose 7th Senseiya. I could have really gone for... I don't have any of the Double Tap characters... But because I also don't have a weakener, and I really like Saya, <laughs> I put him on there. But just go with, with it, I don't know, whichever character you want, really. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you'll have a chance when this ticket comes out in February to get that character and potentially some other goodies. I don't know. A hundred people who vote will be randomly selected to win 1,000 rubies. Considering how many people are probably entered into this campaign, I would not expect to win. But... There is a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. Um, that event also leads into the Feast of 1000 Shooting Gallery, which is also on the website. The 100 Free Summons Retweet campaign, which is... Um, I mean, I haven't even posted the tweet yet because it came out this morning, but we've already hit 20,000, so that's good. Um, and <laughs> that is going to give us uh, another 100 free summons in the second half of the event, so that's cool. And... We're going to get a bunch of these five-star ticket fragments. So uh, by the time you see this video, the link will be there on the website. So go there. Retweet that tweet. We want as many retweets as possible because the more retweets means the more five-star ticket fragments. And maybe if we hit a crazy, super hyper, amazing number, they'll give us some other goodies or something. They have done that in the past. Um, the shooting gallery is not really what I wanted it to be. The shooting gallery, if I show you, we're going back to the website, is down here. Now, what you do is, is that this is the first day. You play the shooting gallery game. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but uh, let's give it a go. <laughs> you play the shooting gallery game. Click this button here, and you can see it's spinning along. And the idea is you're supposed to try and stop it on the character that you want. Right now, out of this selection, the absolute obvious choice to me is Hiei. Because I have all the other characters, <laughs> but also because Hiei is a crazy good unit. Uh, Yorichi or Hiei would be amazing. Hiei is a weakener, very, very good. Yorichi is a normal attack damage buffer, very, very good. He also has a burn weakening support. But the idea is you try and land on the character that you want. So if I see Hiei, well, I've really messed that up. I got Subasa! Now you can just go again. Or you can say, yes, this is the character that I want, and you can tweet it out. Uh, which button's which? Let's find out. So the green button is try again. So if I click that again, I could just keep going until I finally get the character that I want. There's there's no time limit. There's no limit on tries. You just don't tweet it out if you don't get the character that you want. So, oh, can I get here? Can I get here? I really have bad reactions, so this is not, <laughs> this is not a very good game for me. Uh... Oh, bit more, bit more, bit more, he ate, he ate, he ate. Oh my god, there's so many blue. Yeah, let's go. So I got he ate, Dragon of the Darkness Flame, he ate. I would click the blue button. By the way, during the Kimitsuna Yaiba one, the one where you had to match your breathing, I, <laughs> I got it like fourth or fifth try, and I pressed the wrong button, and I just could never get it again. Not that it matters, because I didn't even win the the runner-up prize. So, what are you going to do? But you click the blue button, and it will take you to a little window, which you can see here, to tweet out the result. 
And that's basically saying Dragon of the Darkness Flame here. That's his name. And I'll just tweet that now. Job done. Close that. And so that's done. So I have submitted my thing for here. Now, how the giveaway works, if I click back here. Uh, actually, no, I need to close this. You can see up here that it's done in weeks. First week, second week, third week, fourth week. And within first week, second week, third week, fourth week, there will be 20 limited characters and 40 standard gacha characters given away. So your chances, again, of getting any of these limits is crazy, crazy slim. Um, but, actually, I don't have all these characters. I don't have Yusuke, but I didn't even see him. <laughs> but, the thing is, realistically, none of these characters are worth going for. Because all these characters will be choice ticket or standard gacha at some point. So getting them for free, as nice as it may be, um, you're not really going to care. <laughs> you're not really going to care because you'll be able to get them at some point in 2021. Kie and Yorichi, much, much less so. These are going to be still as difficult to get next year as they were this year. As such... Just, just go for the limits, bro. Just go for the limits and hope you win. There will be some people that go for the heroes. Um, and you will have a much, much, much better chance of winning. But what are you winning? What are you winning exactly? So that's that campaign. Uh, this is the thing I showed you before. That's for the live stream. Uh, this is the Twitter campaign. Uh, so this campaign is for inviting people to play the game through line. Again, you would have to do this on a device you are playing Jamputi on, which I am currently not doing. Uh, but you'd click this button and it will prompt you to invite some people to play from line. If we hit 50,000, this is 1,000 rubies. It's not bad. There's a choice to get out for grabs at 30,000. Everybody's going to get some stamps as well. Uh, so try and take part in this. Uh, they really push these SNS campaigns and you really do get some goodies from them. Going back... Uh, let's see here. So this is the fortune telling event. This event uh, has a large, large amount of RNG where you are trying to get all of these Omikuji and you need uh, to get the best rewards. You need the great luck one, which is the one up here. If you don't get the great luck one or the great fortune one, uh, some of the rewards are going to be out out of reach for you you do have quite a lot of time to get it two weeks or something uh and you'll get 100 rubies from the missions but you need to get this at least i think it's like at least a couple of times to get all the best rewards so my fingers are crossed for you guys i i figure it's pretty likely you will get it at least once um but so far all i've got is is this little guy down here <laughs> so it's not gone great uh this is a three day event oh sorry Three times daily event. This one's just a daily event. This one's a three times daily event. This event is more important than it may seem at first glance. You can clear it three times a day. And it gives a large amount of skill EXP. A large amount of character EXP. And a large amount of player EXP. So make sure you do this every day. Make sure you fill your team to the brim with characters that are not max skill level, that you need to level up their skills, and, and just go ham. Just go ham. There's going to be a loads, of, loads of missions and other stuff, loads of rewards. Make sure you hit up this stage three times a day. Do it all three times every day. Uh, th this event, the most confusing event, but really it's actually quite simple, but it, it had a lot, a lot of text in-game. And therefore, has quite a lot of text on the website. But the basic idea of this event is you collect these here. These are clues. Clue A, clue B, and clue C. You collect these clues so that you can earn these. These are items that represent the pillars of Jump Magazine. It's a classic slogan of the magazine. Friendship, effort, victory. Friendship and effort leads to victory. So you have the compass of friendship, the uh, map of effort. That's not that doesn't roll off the tongue, and the key of victory. So you get these, 
And if you have all three items, you can get the hidden treasure. You may be thinking this is very similar to the 2.5 anniversary with the ship parts and stuff. And you are 100% correct. However, this doesn't have the sort of same thing where you had to enter before a certain time to get certain rubies and, and goodies and whatever. It doesn't really seem to have that aspect. It's just get these three key items to get the treasure. And the treasure's down here. So you can see here the end dates for all of these are all the same. They're the 31st. And just make sure you do the special class once a day once the event is out. And you do all of these. Like It's it's not going to be too bad to get it all done. Um, and collect all three pillars to get the grand treasure of Jumputi. The Jumputi Feast. And that gets you a multi-ticket of 1,000 rubies. So not too shabby. Not too shabby. You'll be able to get Momoshiki from this event. From Boruto, guys, Boruto's in the game. Hallelujah. On on the on the death bed of Naruto Blazing, we have gotten Boruto. Because you know what? We're just better. And now, now that we have Boruto, of course, we can expect an amazing Boruto feature festival. But for now, just Momoshiki and Boruto, who I will show you in just a moment. But here. You can see a basic overview of what's happening in this event. Now, there is a key item that is not apparent at first glance of the news post. And that is the old map. The old map seemingly can only be obtained as a luck bonus. So you need to bring a max luck character at the front of your party. So in slot one on row one. The far left of row one. You need to bring them along. Because they will give you a chance to get these old maps. And these old maps can be used at a special event store. Which as you can see is going to have rubies and tickets and other goodies. So make sure to do that. Really this event's probably not going to be that hard. So it would just be a given to use a 99 luck lead anyway. Especially if you're a player that doesn't have like all the books they need. All the jump souls they need. You should always have a 99 luck character. Because they do boost the drop rate of those items. And certain characters will boost the drop rate of the clues. You can see some of the characters there, including Hippokamaru and Gohan and Boruto, who are all on the Boruto gacha. And Kid Naruto and Kid Sasuke, who I believe are available from this event in the store. Uh, it's up here somewhere. Yeah, they'll be available from this event. So if you don't have them, they should be one of the first things you grab because you can put them in your team and they are going to boost the drop rate. So kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, moving on from this event, we have Alma Karma from D Greyman. We have had, we've had more D Greyman content, which is a surprise because, I'll be honest, I thought what we got so far this year was all all we were gonna get for a very long time. But no, we have got more D Greyman content. Uh, Cross Marion, I suppose realistically shouldn't have been that much of a surprise. Was already in the game as a legend summon. So, that's cool. But Almakama, a bit of a surprise. Uh, a, a Jump Square exclusive character. Uh, the first we've ever had. And I'm sure we'll have more in the future. And it's... Well, it's, it's cool, I guess. <laughs> it's cool, that's all I have to really say. Um, the important thing here is how nice the sprite looks. And the fact that if we're getting more D Greyman content, that means other series of a similar stature can expect more content in the future. I'm very happy for the D Grey Man fans to be getting new content. And these stages, again, transcendent class events, not that difficult. We've got another one here Seikichi Harada from Roku Danashi Blues. Very nice sprite. More Roku Danashi Blues content, which we love. We haven't had any in a very long time. And uh, I mean, we've had, this is covering the final fight of the series, I believe. So, I mean, at least the sprites look nice. At least the sprites look nice. It's something. We have Margin Boo, or as we're going to be calling it from now on, Boo. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit weird. I, I might have to work with the with the naming structure. But obviously, the Boo you see on the left is Super Boo. is the one that's already in the game. And the Boo you see on the right, the game, they, they call him Mr. Boo. And like, that's not really... like I've never really known him to be called Mr. Boo in the West. Just either Boo or Margin Boo. And then this guy on the left, more Super Boo. So, 
I might have to rename them on the database, I'm not too sure, but for now, he is Boo. And to be honest, Sprite looks pretty damn good. Uh, Sprite looks pretty damn good. I'm not a big fan of this version of Boo as a character, but I, don't know. I can't knock the Sprite. It does look good, and the aura does look good on him. I look forward to that being a very difficult event. We have another one. We have Patry from Black Clover. Also a catastrophe stage, so also going to be somewhat difficult, it would appear. And... I don't know. I, I think I must just remember this arc wrong from Black Clover. Because I don't remember him being that big a deal. Like, I remember him just being, like, second fiddle to the devil almost immediately after the devil shows up. So... I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the sprite looks good enough. Aura looks good enough. Uh, I'll be interested to see some more Black Clover content in the future. Bonus unit battle jump returns. This is literally a volume of Shonen Jump that you will be battling against. And it's going to be very easy. Uh, which is good because if you look at the days it's active during, um, that's very not good for me. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else. I don't know how everybody else's year is going. I don't know what they're planning for Christmas. But for me, um, on the 24th, I'm working on the 25th. I'm going to be spending the entire day with my family because it's Christmas Day. On the, on the 26th, I'm going to be working again. And on the 27th, I'm going to be spending the whole day with my family because it's the, the only day available that I have. So I'm not going to have a lot of time to do this. <laughs> but it's going to be very easy. They, they've had this one before and it was very easy. And you're going to get some jewels for doing it, so that's good. If you're new to the game and you don't know about Unity Battle, you need to get your account to rank level 20. And then you have to enter a guild. If you're wondering about, oh, should I enter a guild, like a UK guild or, a, or an English-speaking guild or a US guild or something, it, it's not that important. Realistically, yes, there are benefits to being in a bigger guild because you do level up your, uh, your overall stats faster. And you will reach a higher level as a group, so you will get more rewards. But the amount of rewards you get from ranking more highly is not a lot. And realistically like people don't really play the guild the way it's supposed like originally intended to be played like it was so competitive when it launched but i don't know anybody that genuinely puts absolute mad hours just to try and get the absolute highest rank in uni about it's 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 not that common i maybe that's just like a, an english speaking player base versus japanese speaking player base kind of difference but the rewards for ranking really, really high are not a big deal. <laughs> they used to be. They used to have like exclusive costumes and stuff in certain special unity battles, but it's not a thing now. So uh, just just join any guild. It will offer you to join like a random guild. On my second account, I joined a guild with one other guy that has Yorichi and doesn't play the game. <laughs> so just do that and just play it because the most important thing here is getting these rewards. Fuck all the other rewards. Those jewels are expensive. But I want those so that I can level up my character skills. And you're also going to get some tickets and stuff, which is good. Comeback campaign. Let this be another time I get to remind you that you must join the Jump Uti Heroes line group. And I'm talking about the one that we made, not the one made by the game. In the Jump Uti Heroes line group for the official Discord server. It's not an official Discord server. The official Discord server of... Of us, of OCHD. In that Jump Pooty Discord server, we have a link to that. It's pinned. Join that group and just add everybody. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, I've got to add everybody. Everyone's got to add me back. That's just not how it works. You just add everybody and then you can add them in game. And, and then they're there. And then you can send those people stamina. You should be doing this when you start the game. And then if somebody hasn't played in more than eight days, you can invite them back boom rewards so make sure to do that there are a lot of people in those groups who like come in and out of playing the game based on what events are on a big event like this they'll probably come back if you get them to, if you send them stamina before they come back you get a free multi ticket you can get up to five free multi tickets from this event and you should be sending stamina to everybody during these events but when these events are not on just send stamina to the people that have logged in within the last day and you will get summoner step back. 
from everybody else who sees that you have logged in within the last day. It's the thing that you should be doing, and it's worth doing. It's worth doing because you get good rewards and you get free stamina. We have Gotenks. We have Gotenks. This is it's kind of a big moment, I suppose. It's, it's you know, we talked before about the, the possibility of Vegito, the possibility of what characters we may see, future content for Dragon Ball, stuff like that. We got Gotenks, and he is very, very good. He is a very, very good unit. If you like Gotenks, do not feel bad about summoning on this banner, because he is incredible, and you should go for him. Uh, bear in mind, if you do not have enough for nine multis, you're not necessarily guaranteed to get him. But he's a very good unit, and very worth going for, especially for a beginner. Well, for anybody, really, actually. He's a 44% he's a weakener. Which, if you're not well versed in, in what characters do in the game, that doesn't mean a lot to you. Uh, but it basically means that he's one of the top caliber of units for increasing your team's overall damage output. Because he makes the enemy team more susceptible to your damage. It's very good. It's, it's very, very good. Um, I highly recommend. Highly recommend. But... Uh, um, uh, yeah, I ain't got anything else to say. Highly recommend. You know, he's a bit less. He's he's a bit less good than uh, than Gotenks, which is a shame because out of the two, I probably would have been more inclined to summon for him. Uh, the thing I was hoping for, I suppose, is that he would be the green version of the archetype that Zenitsu and Tanjiro is in. The archetype that does elemental damage, plus has the gimmick of giving you boost, giving you a number of rainbow bubbles uh, on your on your passive ability that also converts block to rainbow which is, is so so useful in so many stages um if he was part of that archetype i'd say he's a 100 percent like very very good unit very usable unit uh you gotta remember that tantro has cleared so much content for me and then zanitsu's coming to be the yellow version of the tantro to have the green version would be amazing sadly he's not quite that but he is a good unit if you want to know more in-depth information on these units, we will go over it in a batch review. Uh, maybe tomorrow or at <laughs> some later date. Uh, all that information will be updated to the database as soon as I have time. Uh, but all those character skills are already available on the Discord server. Uh, very nice spread. A very nice spread. Um, the Feast of 1000 New Heroes Gacha. This one's uh, tricky. I will say tricky. Because I think a lot of people are going to be very interested in summoning for Yukanda. And for me, Tyson Maeda, this is like, this is almost a must have. Like, I, I, I really want him. The sprite looks amazing. The name, Power of Love. Not even in Japanese. Just in, bang, straight up English. Power of Love. Block capitals. I'm kind of gassed about it. The issue is, as I said before... The standard gacha is going to be updated, the ticket pools are going to be updated, and then a bit later next year the choice ticket pools are going to be updated. These are probably some of the last standard gacha units that are going to be added to that pool, because the only other character that's probably going to be standard gacha in the remainder of 2020 is Boruto, who's a bit further down this page. So realistically, with them being like the last units of 2020, it would be smarter to save those rubies until 2021. And then, you know, you can maybe get some tickets that you can summon them on. You can get them from uh, from when you're summoning for other units on other banners. It's probably not that wise to spend your rubies here on these two characters. It doesn't really apply to the limiteds because they don't get added to a special pool or anything. But with these characters, it kind of does apply. And it's, it's a shame because I really want to summon them. If I'm being realistic, I probably still will. But, look, it, it's not wise to spend your rubies here. I'm being honest with you. It's not wise to spend your rubies here. Even if Tyson is beautiful, even if, if Yukanda is, is a, a bit of a hunk, it, it, it's not wise, okay? It's just it's just not wise. Um, same with Boruto. And Boruto's gacha in particular, because with this gacha... If you spend 2,250, you are guaranteed to get one of these two units. And, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Obviously, you might not get the one that you want, but at least you're getting a new unit on the third multi. 
on Boruto's gacha, you have to go five multis to get Boruto guaranteed. And on the steps leading up to that, you could get people like uh, the Gohan, the Hepakamaru, and Anel. Now, to be fair, these are all 2020 units. Uh, Hepakamaru came from, like, just like a couple of events ago. This Gohan is a unit that I really want and is not featured that often. And then you have Anel, who has been featured a few times, but is, is like a late 2020 unit or, like, mid to late 2020 unit. So, pretty good. It's not a bad banner to pull on. It's just the fact that it's... <sighs> Five multis for Boruto. All these characters will boost the drop rates for this event, but it's still going to be five multis for Boruto, which is a bit much for me. And like I said before, he's going to be added to the standard gacha. In fact, all these characters are going to be in the standard gacha from next year and the tickets next year. Probably, like I said, end of January, start of February. So, look, <laughs> just pro probably don't. Probably don't summon on this. But... If you do, five mollies for Boruto. Now these defeat gacha, no matter how tasty they look, you should not be summoning on at all. Sometimes I might be tempted, especially with the case of Torpedo Girl, who is like a very, very good unit. Uh, Canal, who is a character that if I had not summoned her so frivolously during Kimetsu no Yaiba, then I would have really wanted her. Yomi is a 2020 unit. Jonathan's a little bit old. He's a little bit, he's very old, but, you know, look, I, it's not a bad gacha. It's going to help you defeat Majin Buu, but don't summon on these gacha. Don't do it. Uh, same with this gacha here. Just don't do it. And they've really, <laughs> they've really done these two banners a little bit dirty. Jonathan being a 2018 unit and Goto Seijiro, I believe, is also a 2018 unit. So they didn't really need to do that, but okay, fair enough. Um... Just don't summon on the defeat banners. Not this time. Uh, from 2021, sure, go nuts, but not this time. I would also recommend during January, before the pool's updated, be careful what you summon on because, like, like I said, limiters are fine. Everything else, it's a little bit like, uh, should I be doing this? Because if I summoned on a standard gacha in, like, mid-February or whatever, I'm going to have a chance to get even more characters that I don't have. So, yes, just bear it in mind, bear it in mind. Beast of 1000 choice ticket. Uh, I will not be buying this. 4,900 yen for 1,000 rubies and a choice ticket. While it is not an awful deal, especially considering the choice ticket is uh, updated with a bunch of new units from 2020, just personally for me, 4,900 yen for, for that is, is not for me. It's just not for me. The Feast of 1000 Special Attack, again, I won't, I, I will not be buying this because it's not that good. There are some good deals coming out. There's going to be um, a 500 Ruby pack and a, I think a 1000 Ruby pack with like discounted. Those will be pretty good. I think those come out to like $10 for a thousand rubies and like, uh, like a couple of dollars for 500 or something. Those ones are good. Those are going to come out. We don't have a date on those, but I think they're coming for 1000 day. So probably the 21st. Um, but these packs that they've announced so far, they're just really not doing it for me. Uh, part 2. We know that Part 2 is coming. So if any of this stuff only interests you a little bit, not a lot, don't go too hard. Because Part 2 is coming. Now my theory for Part 2 is heavily tied to the other thing you can see coming up on your screen. Which is the official roadmap for 2021 Quarter 1. This is unexpected. <laughs> this is unexpected because they've just given us all this information. Bear in mind, this also tells us, you know, we know that there's going to be a little event at the start of January. So we know January is going to be packed full of content. February packed, March packed. And, well... <sighs> It's a, it's a little bit tricky, isn't it? It's a little bit tricky. What do you summon on? What do you what do you summon on? What do I summon on? I don't know. And I think it could get even trickier than this. You see, there's <laughs> let's let's talk about what's there first. Let's talk about what's there first. So we have Naruto Great Ninja War Feature Festival. Oh dear, <laughs> oh dear. We have the Doctor Stone Stone Wars Feature Festival. We, we will also be having a user interface rework 
and the addition of luck abilities, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, all of that is happening in January. Then in February, we'll have an event featuring Siren and Buso Rankin, a mystery event, user interface rework number two, a strong freeze character will be added, and super dimensional battle number one. Again, we will talk about super dimensional battle. In March, we'll have Katekyo Hitman Reborn at the Inheritance Ceremony Feature Festival. The Inheritance Ceremony is the one with Kozato Enma and his family. And it should be very interesting. should be very, very interesting. Uh, we will have a feature festival from one of the survey series that won. We'll have the first of those. So that will be either Yu-Gi-Oh, Sakigake Otokojuku, or... Who's the other one? The Promised Neverland. The Promised Neverland. We'll have user interface rework number three. Some new gimmicks will be implemented. And we will have the third anniversary, which has been confirmed by the developers. Third anniversary will have the second ever Muso unit. So the second ever version of whatever Hashirama was. So the fact that that's coming on the third anniversary, I would, I would say rubies. There will be a lot of rubies towards the end of March, so remember this. And that's why April kind of looks a bit sparse, because realistically that's going to have the spillover from the third anniversary. So all they've announced for April so far is a new gimmick implementation, again, Super Dimensional Battle number two, and Super Tower, whatever the hell Super Tower is going to be. Then we got character previews. We got Kakashi from when he was a, a young lad, and we got Shishio Tsukasa from Dr. Stone. Now, we already have a Kakashi and a Tsunade and a Kabuto and an Obito, all from Naruto, all have not been added to the Japanese version of the game yet. And now we have yet another Kakashi that has not been added, so this is going to be quite interesting. Um, first things first that I want to talk about, the mystery event. What's the mystery event going to be? Now... The way I see it, there are a few possibilities. Possibility number one is that this is an event. They know they're going to have a feature festival there, but they haven't earmarked anything for it yet. They have content available for a few different series, but they haven't chosen which one's going to fill that spot yet for one reason or another. And they just want you to know, they put the question mark that there is going to be an event there. So you don't think that February is just going to have like just one event and that's it. There is going to be a second event, but they're not telling us. Option number two. This is an event similar to, say, the, the 476 festival. This is a special event celebrating some kind of milestone, some kind of... It's some kind of ensemble event, some big deal event that's going to have lots of rubies and lots of goodies. Um... And they're not going to tell us what it is until the time comes. Option number three. This is a feature festival for a big event, a big series that they have not announced yet or has not been added to the game yet. Potential options could be Slam Dunk, Chainsaw Man or Jujutsu Kaisen. Any of those could be coming to the game of a feature festival. Could be any of those things. The final option is that, as you can see, this event would probably be starting mid-February. Mid-February would be about the 14th. 14th would be Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day could mean certain series will be getting events such as, uh, I don't know, To Love Rue or Nisekoi, or perhaps the other series. You see Siren there, you see Buso Rinkin. We also had We Never Learn announced as a survey winner. Perhaps it will be time for them to come. However, I think that We Never Learn will not be coming then. I just have a hunch, whether it's right or wrong, probably wrong, <laughs> almost definitely wrong. I have a hunch that We Never Learn will be coming uh, for New Year. I think it's going to be tied to the New Year event. I think it's going to be maybe just like one or two characters, probably just um, Naruyuki and the two main girls. And then that will be a part of another event that will have some other New Year stuff. Because you've got to remember, that's kind of what they do at New Year. They have sort of like, it's seasonal, but it's not seasonal type things. So these are characters that are tied to a big festival, uh, you know, with like uh, fireworks and stuff like that. 
but they'll probably just have the normal versions of the characters. Same last year they had um, they had Ichigo, Mugetsu Ichigo. He has a lot of ties to a lot of festivals and stuff in Japan because obviously the moon and stuff like that. That's that's what the whole uh, name of his ability Getsuga Tensho is about. So it's poten potential vibes, potential vibes. I'm saying it, it's a very real possibility we could get We Never Learn, and that's why it hasn't been announced along with all these other series that have been added to the game. Boruto's already there, Siren and Buso Renkin. I think We Never Learn could very well be coming for January, the first week of January. But I would also expect a limited, and I would not expect it to be from We Never Learn. Uh, it'll probably be from a big, it'll probably be a big character or from a big series. You know, Yugi, not Yugi, fucking <laughs> Ichigo was a big deal last year, and he he fought against Kaiba, which again, Kaiba is a big deal. So I would say expect something sizable. Expect something sizable. Uh, as for the other stuff that's been announced and talking about that, I mean, what do I realistically think this is going to be? I think the most likely option is it's an event of the equivalent of the 476 Festival. I don't know what it will be exactly, what it could possibly be celebrating exactly. Um, but, you know, uh, if I do the maths, are we close to like a thousand units? Are we close to a thousand units yet? We can't be that far off. Um, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, even with the characters that did in January and February, I don't think we'll be quite there just yet. But okay, I think it will be some kind of a big, big deal event. A feature festival celebrating some kind of milestone. And I think Siren and Buso Rinkin is going to be an example of something uh, tied to... Uh, what's the best way to lead into this? Basically, we know that we have a new producer, which I'll talk about in just a sec, and the new producer potentially uh, wants to see how he can fit certain series together. Certain series that have some sort of similarities and some sort of uh, worlds that feel a little bit similar and see if he could make a fleshed out event for those series. The example he gave was My Hero Academia and World Trigger. And you could maybe flesh out a world based on those two different series and their worlds being brought together. So, Siren and Buto Rinkin are similar enough. You've got school kids with special abilities. You've got crazy people. It can work. It can work. It can work. Um... But that's what I think that's going to be. I think that's going to be the first example of one of those. As for everything else they've announced, uh, Naruto, uh, <laughs> this is the second time they've done Naruto early enough that it's it's in the new year, but not early enough that it's in the, no, late enough that it's in the new year, um, but, you know, just barely, just barely in the new year, and that way those characters will not be added to the standard catcher pool. Uh, when it gets updated, <laughs> which is like kind of douchey, but I guess it's understandable. I still don't have a lot of the Naruto characters from the last pool. I'm still missing, I think, Sai and Hinata. I think most people will be missing some of the characters, so fair enough, I suppose. Dr. Stone is exciting stuff. I'm glad it's getting more content. Siren is a must summon for me. I don't really care about Buso Rinkin, but I'm interested to see how this event comes together. I don't know what to think of the mystery event, really. I have hopes about what it could be, but the more I think about it, the more excited I get, and the more worried I get that I'm going to be disappointed when eventually it's not what I think it is. So I'm just going to go with it's probably just some kind of ensemble with some goodies. Protect your Hitman Reborn, that's going to sting, because I'm really going to need to... I, I want to summon on that. But it's right next to, it's right next to like the mystery event and Siren, and even Doctor Stone. I kind of want to summon on and the third anniversary, plus this mis this event that's like one of the survey winners. That could easily be Yu-Gi-Oh, which I would want to summon on, or Otakajuku, which I'd want to summon on, or the Promised Neverland, which I kind of want to summon on. But then again, with Promised Neverland, um, I only really care about some of the characters, so it's not as, mu as much of a must-have. But if we get a limited Emma, I'm going to want to summon for that. So, 
I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Uh, as for the other stuff they announced, Super Tower we know nothing about, and I don't really know what to expect with that one. Um, the... What was it? Super Dimensional Battle? Okay, Luck Abilities. Let's talk about Luck Abilities first. So, Luck Abilities is pretty much what it says on the tin. Certain characters are going to gain new abilities when they reach certain luck levels. So, the example you can see there is Yamcha. He is reaching luck 30, and he is unlocking a new ability. So, that could be attack up, damage reduction up, special attack damage up. It could be a number of different things. And I guess the idea is that... They're trying to incentivize you max lucking characters that maybe you had lost a reason to max luck because, you know, maybe max luck rewards don't go high enough for you anymore and you just get into max luck and so you're not getting any rewards for it. Or, and it could be a number of things. I think they are probably going to update the max luck rewards early next year. But uh, for now, it looks like in January they're going to be implementing a system that makes some of these characters maybe a bit more usable. And incentivize you maxing their luck so kind of cool super dimensional battle from what i can tell this is just that that one dragon ball game mode what's it called the dokan one the the not super battle road uh battlefield dokan battlefield it's just dokan battlefield isn't it except the only difference is this is like you can only challenge once a day but it looks like it says, like, bring 51 of your strongest characters and go go nuts trying to do some damage or something. Uh, information on this is kind of small. I mean, literally, the information we have on this is, is pretty much just what you can see on the screen now in Japanese, translated into English. It's, it's not... Oh, I've put 50! i put 50! I'm a fraud! It's 51! Anyway. Um, you challenge a super boss and you try and do as much damage as possible and there's going to be rewards and it's only once a day. Again, this ties into something uh, we know that we've got a new producer. I mean, I'm going to scroll down here. You can see. Farewell, Shirai P. So, Shirai P is the producer for this game. Or at least he was. Uh, he was involved in the live streams, but he was also involved in the development of the game. And he, uh, he showed up in quite a few different places, giving us information on Twitter, on the live stream. He, he did some like articles on some different websites. And he is responsible for a lot of what you see in the game today and a lot of the information we get today. But he is going to be moving on from his current role. He will be somehow involved in the development team, but he basically is going to be a Jamputi ambassador now. Uh, he has passed over two of his key roles to other people. So the first person here, Suga Kenta, who is a person we have seen before. He is a uh, sort of YouTube personality slash Twitter personality slash he's, he's been a voice actor in some things. And I think he, you know, he's, he's been an actor in some things. He's done some other stuff. Uh, it looks like he is going to be taking over the live streams. It's going to be him and Miso Shiru from now on whenever they do a live stream, bringing us information on the game. So kind of cool. And then... We are also going to see his responsibilities as a uh, producer handed over. Uh, so this is kind of a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know about a scary time. An uncertain time, I would say. Uh, simply due to the fact that this is our, our first time seeing this happen. The new producer is a, a man that goes by the name Fujikawa-san. And he hasn't really given us a lot of information about what his plans are for the game. Uh, he basically said he wants to continue as before. Uh, things are sort of going to be changing hands mostly from from around February time. And we're going to be seeing... He says he wants to try and look at ways to sort of bring more depth to certain series. Like, he, he still wants to represent as many series as possible and bring in as many characters as possible, but... I think it's all about trying to find that happy balance of you don't just want to add a character, you want to go more in depth into the story of the series and, and give people who haven't seen the series a reason to maybe get engaged, get involved and maybe read the series and people who already love the series, uh, give them something to really enjoy. They can really indulge in the series that they love. An example of this I would give now is... In the case of Boba Bo, they really went hard giving you loads of characters from the series and loads of information about what is this series about? Who is this character? Why are they here? What's going on? This event, that event, whatever. 
There was loads of events, loads of content, and it's kind of dope. And if you hadn't read it before, you might be tempted to read it. And if you've read it before, it gives you an opportunity to enjoy that series. Compare that to D. Greyman, which this year did get some new characters, but in both cases it was part of an ensemble, and it didn't really add much. You know, we got a new Alan and a new Cross Marion way, way, way back. And then we got a new Alma Karma and new uh, Yukanda. It doesn't really dive much into the series, into the story. And I think the worry is maybe that people won't be as engaged if it doesn't really sink its teeth into the story. The event doesn't really get involved with the story. So, potentially we're going to be seeing more of that. As I mentioned before, he may be making some attempts to uh, marry an event together between two series that have similarities. And we may see more sort of themed ensembles from that. You know, I mean, one of the worst events we ever had was a themed ensemble. It was the Ninja event, which added some good characters, but did it in a not so great way. But I'm hoping that potentially we could be looking at some pretty cool stuff in this near future. Especially considering the fact that Share IP will still be involved to a certain to a certain level. And a lot of the guys working on the team now have been working on the team for a while. They're just going to be taking a more active role. And I think that's important because recently John Putty has been doing some pretty nice events. And I hope they continue to do so. So we're going to see what happens. <laughs> we're going to see what happens. We don't know a lot, but we're going to see what happens. And uh, thank you Share IP for your service to the game. Um, thank you for that uh, DMCA you gave me that one time. That was really nice. That was really cool. Um, and I mean, I don't know. That's that's basically it for this video. Um, in terms of more stuff, missions and whatever, extra information that you're still not fully filled in on, make sure you head over to the Discord, head over to the website, head over to Twitter. All this information is going to be posted somewhere. So those are the places you should be looking. And yeah, holy fuck, this is a long video, but it's not quite an hour, so I did it. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys uh, for the batch review. And also, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow, Wednesday, 4pm GMT. Make sure you're there. We're going to be trying to beat Saga. We're going to be trying to beat, uh, probably, Majin Buu. Actually, I don't know if he's out yet. I think he is. And yes, goodbye. <laughs>